Today is a great honor and welcome back to our English program again. And we have brought up another very interesting topic entitled the role of what or monastery. So to understand in depth and in detail how the Khmer Wat or Wat Monastery of Cambodian play its important role in promoting peace and its com contribution to the society, we will hear from our Dhamma speakers today. Join with us. First, we have invited most venerable Dr. Yon Senjit Prehmani Gosal, live from the Kingdom of Cambodia. Welcome to the show. Thank you for coming. And again, we have invited Venerable Tita Kuno Kaisopir from California, USA. So it is, it is a great honor for our program today that both Venerable speakers have spent some time to join with us. So we will discuss a little bit about the importance and the role of the Cambodian monastery, not just in the Kingdom of Cambodia, but also the Khmer monasteries throughout USA. How it plays an uh, important role in helping our Cambodian people as well as uh, people in the whole world. So uh, without further ado, let me say greeting and pay respect to most notable Dr. Yon Senjit from the Kingdom of Cambodia. How have you been, Pante? I'm good, I'm good, thank you. So in Cambodia right now is, I, I believe it is 8 a.m. in the morning. Have you finished your breakfast? Uh, yes, just a cup of coffee. Okay, so I am so worried about what happened right now in Cambodia. How is the situation at your temple? Uh, so far, so good, yeah. But the infections have been on the rise these days. Uh, in any way, it's still under control, which had been taken by the government. So everything seems to be okay right now. I hope that everyone stays safe, especially our monks in uh, every monastery. I hope that they all stay safe and sound. So uh, anyway, we would like to uh, get to know a little bit about uh, monasteries because um, as Cambodia is one of the Theravada Buddhist countries and Buddhism has spread strongly a uh, long, long time ago, not just in Cambodia, but in many parts of the uh, Southeast Asian countries. And um, Cambodian uh, has strongly um, hold Buddhism dear and near to their heart. And Buddhism has played a very important role in Cambodian people's life in terms of their spiritual guidance and practices. So uh, first of all, before getting to know the roles of the monastery, let me uh, know from most notable Dr. Yon Senjit as you are now residing in Cambodia. Can you uh, tell me about the information of the temple or what? monasteries throughout Cambodia? How many monasteries are there and how many monks are there as far as you know? <clears throat> According to the latest uh, statistics uh, issued by the government, especially the Ministry of Cars and Religions, uh, nowadays we have uh, 4,985 temples across the country which uh, uh, we have uh, over around uh, 70,000 monks, uh, Mahanikaya and Dhammayutta combined, because we have two sections, two Nikayas in Cambodia. So uh, this is the numbers of the temples and the monks, uh, which belong to both Nikayas. Thank, thank you so much, Boss Madhubal Doctor, for sharing a brief information about the total number of the uh, monasteries throughout Cambodia, as you mentioned, around 4,900 monasteries throughout Cambodia and around 70,000 Buddhist monks in uh, Cambodia. So uh, let me move back to Venerable Tita Kono Kaisopir, who, who currently resides in California, USA. How have you been, Pante? Hi. Uh, well, Pante, I'm doing well. Pretty good, but a little bit busy with so many things around. Yeah, so far so good, yeah, thank you. Yes, yeah, so how is the situation at your monastery? Is everyone doing okay during this pandemic? 
Yes, uh, mostly our grand, I mean, grandmas and grandpas and all the devotees, mostly the aging people got vaccinated uh, uh, from this, uh, a, you know, deadly virus. So we so far got many uh, numbers of people get vaccinated. So we are doing uh, pretty good right now. Yes. Yeah, thank you for sharing your information. I do hope that uh, our Cambodian monks and people in every places stay safe and sound during this uh, pandemic. And uh, I would like to know also about the Cambodian monasteries throughout USA, as well as you know, how many uh, Khmer wards or monasteries are there throughout the United States of America? Please, uh, Thank you. Uh, according to the statistics uh, established, you know, the booklet established by our white president, Venerable uh, Pastor Paul, we have so far 334 temples, uh, monasteries. Uh, but there is there's another uh, monastery in, in Florida, which is in San Pete. Uh, I'm not quite sure whether it is registered yet, but uh, so far we have uh, 334 and maybe a little bit more uh, because uh, we don't know exactly the numbers uh, because of the pandemic we couldn't go around and and and, and do uh, another uh, statistics to get to know more temples uh, with monasteries and about the monk uh, a few years ago and maybe last two years uh, we have more than 400 monks but because of the pandemic uh, we might be having less monks. Uh, some of them went back to Cambodia and, and, and some, you know, back and forth. And so there's no exact numbers uh, because of this, this pandemic. So yeah, we have 400 monks in the U uh, across the US. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ponte, for sharing a brief information about the Khmer monasteries, what we call as a uh, Cambodian word as what we have around 334 monasteries throughout the United States of uh, America. So this is these are the Khmer monasteries. We only talk about the Khmer monastery through the, throughout the United States of America. And as you mentioned, about uh, 400 monks uh, uh, living in in America. So it is a, uh, it is a news. I think it's a good news, and also it's a good um, work that. Cambodian Buddhist Monk Society in USA have, uh, you know, work hard in order to collect the information throughout the United States. Some people, they might want to know the Cambodian uh, monastery where they are located. So we also have uh, published as a, a booklet, uh, especially uh, made by Most Venerable Pat Supal. Uh, we have the English version and all the address are there if you want to know more about the Khmer monasteries. Uh, so feel free to contact uh, with the CBMS. So we have the uh, booklets. And also we have been contributing to people around the United States in order to have some information about our temple. And now we are approaching to Khmer New Year as well in the next two weeks. Uh, the Khmer New Year is coming. And I believe that every Khmer monastery is very busy preparing uh, to welcome the Khmer New Year. And so I would like to know, I also would like to discuss and ask some questions to most venerable Dr. Brahmani Kausal from Cambodia. When we talk about what or monastery, how would you define the term what? As sometimes Khmer people refer uh, to call it as a what aram. So what does it mean by that term, most venerable doctor? Uh, terminology is itself is translated is the way of practice uh, in Bali term, but this term had been used in Cambodia to uh, name a center, a religious center, especially referred to the Buddhist center as a residence or place or a place where the mostly the monks are living and uh, uh, a place where the Buddhists from all over the country come to uh, to learn, to live, 
and so many things, especially I uh, can say that the Buddhist, the, the Wat, uh, is a sort of multidimensional center for Cambodian Buddhist. And we also use, we extend the term Aram, uh, combined with like what Aram. Aram, Aram, according to the Bali term, it is a place where people can rejoice or enjoy. So, in short, what Aram is a place where Buddhism stay and a place where Buddhism has been touched and propagated, a place where people can come and heal uh, themselves, a place where people can come and express their sorrows, a place where people can come and talk so many things. And to the, uh, all, to the deepest meaning, I personally believe that uh, temple or what is a place where people from, walk, from all walks of life can come and say something, talk something, and do something in terms of the good deeds. Thank you. Thank you. And most about Dr. Is it what is this term uh, derived from a Pali word, isn't it? Yes, what that. Actually, uh, this term in, in the, uh, if we look at the, the Buddhist scripture, what uh, used uh, to refer to the way of practice, uh, like you say, what run about a, place, uh, a path for practice. Uh, during the Buddha's time, it is known uh, it is known as Vihara. Vihara is referred to the, the word that we are using nowadays, like Vela one Vihara, Vela one Vihara, Veda one Vihara. But uh, gradually, I th uh, uh, in Cambodia we use the word what to refer to a place. Especially people know it as know it as a place that monks stay, or simply mean a Buddhist uh, center. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much, Venerable Doctor, for sharing some information. I think it is very interesting that people come to understand this term, particularly how does it refer to when you share about it is a place where usually the monk reside and stay, and also it's the term derived from Pali, which means to practice. So the temple is like a spiritual practice where monks uh, conduct you know, are committed to good conduct and practice in terms of morality, discipline, meditation, and so on. And it also add up with the another word as arama. And again, it is also the Pali word that we borrow to use it to, to mean it is a place of delight. It is a place of, um, you know, where people can pay attention to uh, because of the attraction, uh, the way the monks uh, manage and uh, prepare the temple to to build a peaceful environment for people who are coming to seek spiritual guidance and so on. So again, let me move back to Venerable uh, Tita Kuno Kaisopi. If you had, yeah, Venerable Doctor, you have anything else? Um, uh, I would like to add a few more words uh, yeah, on please. the issue. I think this the, this term the the term word is used especially in Thailand in Laos and in Cambodia. I'm not sure uh, in Myanmar what kind of word that they use to call the temple, but in Sri Lanka, people don't know that if we call what, if we call the Buddhist uh, temple as a what, they call the temple as Vihara, but I'm not sure in Myanmar. I thought, so these three countries are used the same word to refer to the place where that monk stay among Liu, which we know, we know in Cambodia as a what. Yeah, definitely, Pande, definitely. Uh, I think most mostly we see Cambodia, Thai, and Laos, we use the word Vot to refer to the residence of the monk. Whereas in Myanmar, they use uh, the, the word Phong Chi Chang. Phong Chi Chang refers to the school of the monk. They don't use the word Vot, but they refer to some sort of school of the monk, Phong Chi Chang, as in their language. So uh, thank you for sharing. And let me turn to Venerable Kai Sophia. You know, we have... Uh, use different terms to refer to the place where the monk lives. But I think sometimes we get confused with the English term. Of, of course, we are not native speaker and we don't, uh, you know, exactly 
know how to define it uh, to 100% correct or not. But as far as I have seen, uh, there are some words that my people used to use, used to call it. Sometimes we use the word pagoda. You know, it, it's funny sometimes uh, the word pagoda in the sense of Myanmar people, they use it to refer to the stupa, the, the jetia, you know, like the sway the gong pagoda. And when we say pagoda, it completely means different thing for Myanmar people. But in Cambodia, pagoda would refer to what, you know? And then uh, we also have the word temple. And of course, in some countries like Sri Lanka, Malaysia, Singapore, etc., the word temple is very popular. It, it is being used in many countries. And again, in Cambodia, if you use the word temple, uh, people might think about the ancient monument like Angkor Wat Temple, but we don't think it is a temple where the monk, the place where the monk lives. So the kind of you know uh, confusion. So I want to ask when the book guys up here, what is the uh, most popular word you know used to refer to? the what uh, that we are referring to the place where the monk lives. Can you give the English, uh, suggest the English terminology when they please? Thank you, thank you, Venerable. For me personally, I, 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 don't, uh, I don't feel those words uh, are different because it refers to the, uh, to the religious place. So as long as you are, uh, you know, it depends on the, the, you know, you have to accept that the fact that we are all uh, practicing religious, you know, infiltrating through cultures and traditions. So English, you know, if you want to use exact word and to describe a, a temple or like what, like, 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 like we are all talking about, you know, it depends on the countries, it depends on the cultures that you are uh, you've been using the, the word. So the language is created by human being. As long as we are recognized as a word that you are referring to a place where the monks stay, you know, for me, I don't know, some, some people might, might have different opinions, might have different understanding, but uh, personally, I don't, I don't take that seriously. Uh, you know, when we talk about what, uh, sometimes you are referring to as a monastery or the temple. For me personally, what is, it's monk house, <laughs> uh, you know, it's just a different, like, you know, sometimes uh, a, a normal house for the people, they have different portions yeah, for, uh, you, know, you know, like they have a, a place where people can, can gather for guests and for, but a temple or monastery, we have a different portion for monks to stay, for people come to worship, like Vihara, uh, referring to the place where the, monk, the monks gather to perform their disciplinary, the rules which is mentioned in the Tupitaka. So uh, what a monastery or temples or pagoda is, is a center, is a religious center, is serving not only the, the Buddha's teaching, but also the cultures of each country that they are practicing. Like in Cambodia, we have you know, every festival, every uh, ceremony, that the major celebration in the country are normally celebrating at the temple, at the monastery. So, uh, but there's uh, two things that I would like to uh, express here. You know, when you express the word what, you know, people normally uh, refer to the place, but people often forget to, to have what in their heart, in their mind. You know, practicing the Buddha's teaching, it's not only the worship, uh, worship, uh, no, 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 the religious, uh, religious place, but practicing the Buddha's teaching is often living within ourselves in our daily life. So if you have what in your heart, in your mind, in your daily, so that is your, you, you always have mastery in your, in, in, in yourself. So uh, for me personally, as long as you uh, practicing the right thing and um, basically the teaching of the Buddha. So you have what in yourself. So, but here, as you said, is the place where the monks stay and people come and watch uh, and, and practice and and and, and uh, doing religious things. So this is all. Thank you. Thank, thank you for reminding all of us to the word, the term what, as you refer to something is not just referring to the place where the monk live, but it also reflects 
the practice that the monks does and not just the monk but for us as a buddhist you know what is something like spiritual practice it means that we all have to uh, to do the practice uh, we have the symbol of buddhist monk uh, they, because the word can be defined in various ways but uh, how we often use it and traditionally uh, it comes to our understanding automatically by that way, you know. So again, it, it brings me to another term as the most memorable doctor have raised about the word we hear. You know, some people, especially in the Cambodian context, we are still confusing about uh, we hear and what's, even some they ask you that uh, what should have uh, we hear, otherwise it's not, it's not like a, a complete thing as a what. So, Wonderful Doctor, what would you explain about this, the term we hear and what some people say we hear is like a shrine where people pay respect or uh, do the worship or praying, chanting, but uh, what is something, uh, it's like the whole compound of monastery, is it true? Uh, yeah. Good question. <laughs> uh, I think this is the complicatedness of the terminology usage. Uh, but the meaning of the terms we have been used by different Buddhist countries is just refer to the, uh, you know, something which can be known uh, easily in their own respective uh, location or country. Uh, for example, uh, we, Vihara. Vihara, definitely everybody will agree with me that the term Vihara is referred to the temple or to a place where the monks stay. Especially if you look at the Buddhist scripture, definitely that term is used by the Buddha. And we hear of Vihara, which had been used which is used in Cambodia is referred to the Upo Satagara, a, a building where the monk can perform the Sangha Kama. Uh, so this is a little bit complicatedness. But I think the, the identity, the, the, the monastery uh, identity is defined by different countries. For example, in Sri Lanka, the monastery must consist of Jet day doesn't mean the, the, the stupor where they uh, keep the normal people uh, bones or ash. Uh, they keep the Buddha's relics or the Arahanta relics that they stupor. And they must have bow tree. And uh, the uh, bow tree, jet uh, and the monks. But in Cambodia, uh, our temple, uh, we have monks. Vihara, and I think this is very important. This Vihara seems to be the most important uh, buildings in Cambodian context. So if I'm asked uh, to exactly define the term what uh, in one word in Cambodia, I would like say I would like to say that Cambodian Buddhist temple definitely it has to be a monk. And the building is, it depends on how people uh, define it or evaluate it. But it is very important for sure. But Vihara is used for many purposes in Cambodian context. So if we look at the definition or the importance, uh, important value between the Sri Lankan temples and the uh, Cambodian Buddhist temple, and Thai temples and Myanmar temples are different. So it is very difficult to exactly define the term monastery to fit all the meaning of all these uh, Theravada Buddhist countries. Thank you so much, Venerable Doctor. Uh, you just uh, raised about the word monastery and it reminded me um, about this term when I joined the um, in the faith dialogue here in uh, in Seattle, uh, I once time talked to a, a Hindu monastic monk uh, because he he told he asked me, "Are you a monk or are you a monastic monk?" 
Then I asked him, is there any difference between a monk and a monastic monk? So, so the, the, the answer was very interesting. That's why I just want to clarify a little bit about the definition. It would, it would, uh, it may be helpful, you know, because when we uh, define the, the right terminologies, because there are different kinds of monks, of course, not just in the context of Buddhist monks, but also in other religious, uh, they have their own priests, they have the monks too, but some monks, they don't live in the monastery. So they don't call themselves as a monast monastic monks and they don't even shave their head, you know. So when I, I talked to him, I, don't, I didn't even realize he was a monk. He sit close next to me and he talked to me. Are you a Buddhist monk? I said, yes, I am. He said, I am a monastic Hindu monk. And then I started to ask, what is different between the monastic and not monastic monk? He said, monastic is, is someone who devoted one's life on the path of practice without uh, married to someone, no marriage engaged. That's why he said um, monastery is, is the good term that fit in that sense if you are uh, living in a place of, um, you know, like uh, um, seclusion or without having the family life as marriage or something. So I think it's a good reminder for, for all of us to just a little bit understand about uh, the term, of course, uh, we have been confused sometimes because of the term. And here we're not trying to be, you know, terminology specialist, but we just want to define because some people have uh, misunderstand about the term. And of course, as Venerable Kai Sophia has already mentioned that it depends on how we culturally and traditionally use it. And Venerable Doctor also pointed out that from countries to countries, uh, the term has used in different ways. That's why we want to look back at the, uh, at the Cambodian context, how what or monastery means and play its role in helping uh, our Cambodian people, not just the, the monks, but also the lay people. So let me turn to Venerable Kai Sophia here as you already talked a little bit about the temple, the such and such is a kind of place to do this and that. So uh, what are some roles that uh, Cambodian what or monastery have been contributing to Cambodian society? If you could uh, look back a little bit of historical background of the Cambodian what, how did it play the roles in helping Cambodian society, please? Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, well, before I begin answer, uh, answering this question, I would like to refer to uh, what you have just discussed with uh, Venerable Doctor about and also with the Hindu monk. You know, when you know, one thing that we need to remind ourselves that English is not an ancient language. English has been developed and derived from a variety of the language. And you know when he referred that oh you're a monk or monastic monk uh, have a different meaning. So I think that we all in uh, other Buddhist countries such as Cambodia, Thailand, and uh, other countries can marry can get married <laughs> because uh, if 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 we just uh, specifically mention that oh if you are saying that you are a monastic monk or you're just a monk that you still can marry. So so it depends. I mean like I don't know whether he's going up here or I I would make a joke at what then I still can. Uh, go and get married then <laughs> because you know uh, it depends on uh, for me uh, deeply it depends on the cultures that that people in the culture accepted it and when they call us as a monk you know they you know they they think that we are devoted our life uh, to uh, the buddhist practices so, i mean like if they are saying that uh, if we are saying that i'm a buddhist monk so we are devoted our of a life to practice Buddhist teaching, Buddha's teaching. So, yeah, so it depends. So, well, the terminology is uh, really complicated sometimes and it depends on uh, your personal understanding. And while we are not scholars, I'm not a Buddhist, uh, English scholar, so uh, we cannot uh, go along and uh, differentiate these uh, differences. So, but I would, I would refer, I would, I would say that we, must follow our cultures and 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 as well as people cultures. Uh, we also have the same Buddhists, but we have different cultures, of course. And we uh, so that is that that I would refer to the the monastery that that uh, that we are talking about. That you are asking that 
what is the role of, of the monasteries and especially the monks who are living in the monastery or temple of the pagoda. So the role is to preserve, you know, to preserve and also spreading, disseminating the teaching of the Buddha. So it, 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 it represents, you know, temple represents the value and dignity of, of each, uh, each culture, each uh, people uh, that come from different parts of the world. So when we talk about the Buddhist temple, Buddhist monastery, Cambodian Buddhist, Buddhist monastery in, in America, you can see that we are playing a very important role in healing uh, the people who, 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 who had uh, traumatized uh, from the civil war. And not only that, and then, you know, uh, because cult, uh, Buddhist temple, Buddhist monastery is, is the center for all people to come and, and, and share their, uh, their, you know, their, their happiness, their suffering and everything. It means a lot. Right? It means a lot for, for all of us as a Cambodian uh, uh, people. And, and at the same time, uh, we are sharing the teaching, you know, uh, the basic thing, the teaching of the Buddha that 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 can assure all of us to to sustain our happiness in our daily life. So uh, there are many more things. I think uh, 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 maybe uh, Venerable Dr. Yanti, you can share with us more about about this because uh, you know we been uh, practicing Buddhist Buddha's teaching from you know many generations. Uh, so I think it, it, it rooted deeply in our, in, in our life as a Cambodian. So thank you. Thank you so much for sharing, uh, especially the most important point about temple or monastery. Its role is like a place for healing as our Cambodian people have gone through a lot of hardship, uh, especially the civil war and genocidal you know, regime, which have people Leave, uh, left people, you know, in uh, trauma and so on. So temple is like a place uh, to have healing people in terms of spirituality. So again, let me turn to most memorable Dr. Yon Sinjit about uh, the same question that um, what are the roles of what or monastery, especially in the Cambodian context, uh, historically, when we look back at, um, you know, in the past, uh, uh, how what or uh, monastery play its roles in uh, helping people or preserving in uh, you know in many different fields. So, Venerable Doctor, please help uh, share with us about the roles of monastery. The Cambodian Buddhist temple plays a very important role in the society, especially if we trace back in the history in the range of King Jayavaramansa when Buddhism had been declared as a state religion uh, of the country it simply meant that most of the population were Buddhist those day and the rulers also uh, practiced Buddhism uh, genuinely and deeply, especially if we look back into the, uh, the scriptures we found during the King Jayavaramansa and even though he declared himself as Avilokiteswara is one of the Bodhisattva in Mahayana. In whatever Nikaya he follow, still signify the importance of Buddhism in Cambodian society. From first century till 1975, so Buddhism had played a very important role. But the day that the uh, regime came to power, so Buddhism had been grounded and destroy and abandon and forbidden. So uh, let me uh, jump up uh, to the uh, recent history, especially nowadays. Even though Buddhism had been uh, facing a lot of problems, especially its resources, human resources and material resources in terms of the uh, religious uh, structure had been destroyed. The monks, especially the learned monks, were persecuted. Uh, in a way, Cambodian Buddhists are still able to manage to get back on their own feet. And nowadays, we get back and everything is on the rise and on uh, 
the, the, the practice, the situation of the temple is fine. If it is not perfect, but it's fine, it's good, yeah. And there are so many ideas which define the Cambodian Buddhist temple, the temples in Cambodia. Some people uh, call it a place, the, the religious institution uh, in terms of the uh, Buddhist practice. And some people call it as a, a, a Buddhist hospital <laughs> because people, uh, where the people can come and heal themselves and express their sufferings. And some people call it as a cultural center, a traditional center, or in some sense, they call it, it is a political center where that the nationalism is born and fed and torched and discussed, you know? And the other people, some people might call the temple as the educa educational institution where the temple provide all kinds formal and informal uh, education to the populations, especially to the under underprivileged population. The, the destitute people always come to the temple for help. And I would like to call a temple as, maybe I would like to add one more idea that temple is a charity, temp, uh, ch charity uh, center where people can come and have a free lunch even though not always good lunch, but it is still a lunch that, especially, you know, when there is a big festivals like Jungman or George Nam or any big ceremony in the temple, we always see the poor people come and uh, have a lunch with the monks, with the people, especially with the ones who are living in the temple. And one thing that I like about Cambodian Buddhist temple is, uh, in the temple, we don't define the social status. From the king up to the beggar, people can come and have lunch in the temple. So this is a very important. And we also have a lot of uh, negative points, especially uh, we also have a positive point. That is the situation, the, 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 the law of nature that one always have two faces good size and bad size, but it is okay. That is the society. And in short, I call the Cambodian Buddhist temple as a place where the, all people from all walks of life can come and enjoy their life. Thank you. Thank you most for the board of the, for providing some important roles of the Cambodian board or monasteries. As you said, it is like an education center, a cultural center, uh, like some people call it as a hospital, a charity. And it, it um, reminds me about my uh, past experience as a temple boy, you know, uh, back 20 years ago uh, after the, uh, you know, the full boat uh, regime, uh, Cambodian, uh, uh, has Cambodia has faced a lot of hardship and especially a lot of family they you know underwent the hardship the difficulty because of economic problem and I myself including some of my family also we you know sought help from the temple we went to live in a temple in the hope that we could get some food to eat and place to to stay and a place to learn as well uh, after to the civil war, uh, we don't have a lot of schooling. Uh, so the access to education was very hard at the time. So temple uh, was the school actually to have people uh, come and learn for free. And we would see uh, most of the temple in Cambodia in the, in the world, we mostly have the, uh, at least the primary school for people to study freely. And even sometimes we learn from the monks as well, not just in the uh, secular primary school, but in the temple itself, we have the, the Buddhist education, which provide free education and the temple boys also live freely. We don't pay for anything. It's like a hotel for us, for example. So I believe that um, uh, the Cambodian monastery uh, has done a lot of uh, important role in helping people's life, not just in terms of 
cultural charitable education uh, hospital but also the um, I think the life and as well as the experience to build us growing up well to understand the world and uh, specifically for myself I have been in the temple since I was seven years until now I have been living in monastery until now you see uh, uh, we, if not for the temple I would not have been as I am today so it is very important when we talk about uh, the role of uh, monastery. Uh, let me turn to Venerable Kaisupi. Uh, some people raise the actual, the idea that uh, now the monks are focusing on building the temple, building more monasteries. Some actually that it's, it is useless just to have the big building and monastery. Do you see that this argument is right or not, especially in terms of uh, America, United States of America, we see that a lot of monasteries are growing up, you know, we're trying to create more monastery. Is there anything which is not useful by building the monastery? Thank you, thank you. But uh, before I answer this question, I would like to join uh, both of you on, on, on the meaning of the monastery. You know, uh, I, would, I would say that monastery or Buddhist temple in Cambodia offer hope and opportunity you know i mean we are the monks uh, i can say that we are poor we, we were born in a, a a very poor family and then temple give us an opportunity and hope uh, to be better in in this life and Yes, I uh, refer to the again to the, your to your question. I I, be, I was being asked uh, about this question the same with the uh, with the councilors and I don't know the, the the city councilors in Long Beach here in California and and many others. Uh, you know, there's a a media producer uh, because they are they are trying to understand the Cambodian cultures. Uh, why do we have to preserve the Cambodian cultures in the U.S. And they, they ask the same question. Why do you know, especially in Long Beach, where I live right now, we have uh, more, um, you know, more than four, 14 temples, uh, which is more, de more than any other places in the, in the United States. And then uh, I post back the question. Uh, for me personally, it, it doesn't matter how many temples we have, how many monasteries we have, as long as uh, we do have people come. Uh, and I asked them back and said, uh, you drive around Long Beach, uh, you see how many churches, how many churches uh, was being built in, in Long Beach. And then he was surprised that, oh, really? Yes, every corner of the, of the street, they, they have churches. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of uh, people might be having a negative thought about it, but for me personally, well, you know, every, every culture and every country, every nation, every ethnic city, we all have problems. You know, sometimes we might not having uh, the same idea along. We couldn't get along with the same idea, so we build another one. So it, 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 it's not the big deal. You know, the most important thing is that you are serving the people who are in suffering. We are helping the people who are in need. And, and if you are focused uh, focusing on the negative things. So how are you going to live happily in life? Uh, because, because this is what we are. We learn from mistakes. We are, we are, we are get, getting rid of suffering because we are understanding it. We learn from the suffering and to get there to be more happy. And then we look at the temple, we look at the monasteries, and then some people are not, you know, for those who are, are true supportive, a true supporters, a true, true sponsor to the monasteries, they don't, they don't complain, they don't argue, but only a bunch of people who might have different ideas, or he might, or I don't know, but they, so we respect that. For me personally, I respect that. Okay, you can complain, you can have different ideas. Why, why monks are building many temples? And you, well, uh, if, you are, if you don't like it, you just avoid it. So that's how it is, you know, that is how we live the life. And it, it's not a big deal, you know, uh, because this is how we live. Even in America, you see how many different, how many churches, how many other religious, you know, even 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 the uh, Muslim mosque 
here. We have we have many of them here. So, you know, because here sometimes, you know, we have a small place and people, and if you want to build a big monastery far from the people, people wouldn't, don't want to go. So uh, when we have a small place, so why why is it matter to, to, to have another one? So you can have a place for people to come in and do religious things which can comfort you when you when when you are suffering. So yeah, this is uh, what I'm, I understand. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mante. I think it is very critical point for the present situation. And I believe that um, uh, people can start to understand why we need a monastery, uh, like in a country like USA, uh, we have a lot of Khmer population throughout the state. And even some state, uh, they don't have the Khmer temple yet. So uh, because Cambodian people, you know, very devoted to Buddhism. So they always likes to have a place where they can go and, you know, celebrate at least their own cultures, like the Khmer New Year itself. Imagine without the temple, where would they go during the Khmer New Year? Even you have a big hall, big places uh, to celebrate the Khmer New Year, I believe that it would not be as happy as in the temple, right? In, in the monastery. So uh, thinking about this idea, uh, monastery is not only just a center for, uh, you know, for uh, uh, gathering, but also a place where people can freely enjoy and they feel safe being at the temple. They don't feel like being forced or you know, being charged of money, and they uh, they feel delightful bringing donation and foods and material to offer to the monks. And this is like a spiritual place where they can uh, spiritually, you know, become happy whenever they approach the temple. So uh, when we understand the concept of the the Khmer Wars in, in United States, I think we can get understanding more about how. Uh, Cambodian what plays its important role in uh, helping people, not just physically, but also uh, spiritually. So let me uh, turn on, uh, you know, move back to Venerable Dr. Yon Sin Jip. As you mentioned, their temple is a place which provides a lot of services to the people. I want to specifically ask you about in terms of education, as you said that um, Buddhist monastery also plays an important role in terms of its education. What kind of education that uh, monastery uh, have been providing to society? Uh, in Cambodia, we have two, uh, two kinds of education. One is secular uh, education run by the government, and the, the, the other one is monastic education run by the Sankha community, which is, which is funded fully by the government. And the, <clears throat> the, temple, the, the temple, the monastery is uh, defined as the educational center is uh, one thing that the temple provide educations to the ones who is or the one who are the ones who is ordained as a monastic member. Uh, and the other one is uh, each and every day Buddhist monk goes out uh, of the temple and teach the people informally, uh, informally in terms of preaching, in terms of uh, giving counseling, and uh, especially uh, they teach Buddhism on different stages. So this is uh, this this is the reason that we call the Cambodian Buddhist Temple as an educational center, uh, day and night. Because when, for example, uh, we start from even when the peop some people, when the uh, the wife got pregnant, so they invite Buddhist monk to bless them, and we also give a very short teaching, a very short preaching, tell her to you know kind of not to get uh, more not to get angry, to be happy, and uh, kind of. Uh, uh, get ready for the baby and we bless them. And then when they got married, we also go to bless them. And when they got a house, new house, we also go to bless them. Bless them mean we also give, you know, some very short teaching, tell them how to live. And when they got married, when they got a baby, when they got sick, and when they die. So from the very beginning of life until the end of Cambodian life, 
Buddhist monk is always associated with the life of the people. So this is uh, called informal education. Sometimes I think it's more powerful than the formal education at school too. Yeah. Uh, because I used to go to the temple or go to the peoples when they are suffering from yeah. either uh, sickness or family problems or whatever we may call uh, our presences at their homes are places. They feel some sort of warmth, some sort of release that they see us, but the way we approach them, it has to be carefully uh, managed. Otherwise, it's gonna give some more problems. But this is another uh, issue that we can talk later. So apart from all this kind of uh, religious education, uh, informal education, we also have uh, uh, the, the formal monastic education which is provided to the member of monastics. And, uh, I think like, for example, in Cambodia right now, we have around 60,000 monks. Out of the 60,000 monks, around 80 persons are at school, at monastic school, or we call Salapale. So this is the peoples. This is the sons of Cambodian Buddhists. Uh, all over the countries, they come to live and study in the temple. So the temple provides all this, all this uh, sort of educations uh, to these monks. And apart from monastic uh, members, we also have a temple voice. We call uh, it uh, Simply we call it Gonsai uh, So uh, most of the temple boys are poor boys uh, from uh, different provinces which they uh, try to pursue a higher education in the city, either in the city or in a small town in different places across the country. So uh, the temple becomes the only place, the only option for those underprivileged populations to rely on. So you got a free food, you got uh, free accommodations, and while they are at the temple, so they can uh, learn Buddhism and they experience the monastic way of life. So these are all the reasons that make me make the people call the Buddhist temple as educational center. Thank you, Honorable Doctor. So what our Kapai monastery is not just a, a place of healing, but especially the center for education. As you mentioned, uh, education play the most important part uh, in the Cambodian context as the, uh, you know, as the board or monastery. I remember um, a lot of good human resources has been produced from the monastery, you know. So we may call the temples like a factory, you know, produced a lot of good human resources, uh, like for example, some Dajunat and a lot of other scholars who have solely devoted their life, uh, dedicated to Buddhism and they, the whole life, They've been in the temple, like some like you not himself, since at the age of 14 years, he went to live in the temple and under the leadership of the monk, he um, attended education from school to school until he graduated and become a great scholar of Cambodia. And if we remember back in the French colonization, you know, our culture, our language was almost gone but the temple preserve it. Uh, so temple has been uh, part of the cultural center as we have mentioned earlier. It's not just a place of uh, simple education, but it also a place of uh, cultural preservation, language and literature uh, preservation. And a lot of things, a lot of skill has been taught uh, at the monastery. Uh, of course, back in the past, uh, the, the, the access to education was really hard. We cannot get it nowhere, but in the temple where temple boys, they uh, get access to free education and free accommodation. And also they, they are taught with some skills. So even when they come back to normal life, they could uh, have some, uh, you know, livelihood to depend on, them, on themselves. So most of the 
uh, temple boys, they now become the great scholar. Uh, they, they have become great scholars in, in Cambodian society. Some they have become uh, great leaders even up to now with the So Venerable Kai Zupir, would you have anything to add on to that as we are Buddhist monks? And I believe that we have a lot of gratitude, uh, you know, talking about the monastery. How would you reflect your life without the, the temple, the monastery? Wow. <laughs> well, simply with, uh, without sheltering at the temple, uh, I don't know how my life is going to be like, you know, it, it's extremely hard. And I won't be having this opportunity, you know, you know, especially to speak <laughs> English, because uh, it, it, it's a lot, it, it means a lot for me personally, uh, for, for the monastery, you know, it, it, it means the whole things in my life. And I would like to refer a little bit to when about, uh, Dr. Yuan Tengit and you also mentioned about uh, the, the centers of, of, the, of the monastery. You know, one thing that uh, Buddhist, uh, Cambodian Buddhist monk roles play in America is to, you know, to teach uh, moral conduct to the people. Although we, we are not having a, a, a formal class in every temple, but Usually we, we teach them doing uh, the ceremonies at the houses, at the temple. You know, uh, moral conduct is very important. For example, the, the five precepts, the basic teachings in, in the Buddha's uh, teaching. You know, moral conduct, even in, in America, you know, it is a very uh, a big deal in, 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 in growing the society, in, in prospering the society. So we all need uh, immoral conduct. and. If it, to sustain and to assure uh, the happiness of, of each and every one of us, and not just uh, you know uh, Cambodian communities, but also American communities, uh, Cambodian American and uh, American people who are uh, desperately want to learn. You can see that uh, in America, not just uh, Khmer Buddhist monks, but we also have a, a significant numbers of the American monks as well. So, you know, American people who became a monk and practice uh, Buddhist teaching. So yes, they are all teaching the moral conduct and uh, to, 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 to a different level. So I think uh, this is a, a very important, a very significant uh, that, that we, all of us uh, learn this moral conduct and uh, you know, act properly and to assure that we all uh, overcome all the sufferings that we are experiencing in life. So, yeah, this is all. That is amazing, Ponte. That's amazing. I think most of the secular school is not just a place of um, mostly we focus is on learning, education, getting knowledge, but the education provided by Buddhism is mainly focusing on how we behave, on how we um, control ourselves, guard our senses in terms of restraining and moral discipline, spirituality training the mind, meditation. And this is very, I think the most important part of, um, you know, the Buddhist education uh, contributed through the temple, through the monastery. Let me turn back to most venerable doctor. How would you reflect your life without the monastery? Uh, um, I, I think Cambodian temple is very unique comparing to the temples in Laos, in Thai, in Sri Lanka, and other Buddhist countries. Because uh, it seems that Cambodian temple is everything. <laughs> uh, for example, uh, when you are happy, you come to the temple. When you are suffering, you come to the temple. Um, sometimes it's very funny to raise this uh, story. For example, if people feel that something is not good, then they bring all those things to the temple, kind of to, uh, to, uh, to cleanse it, make it uh, holy or make it a uh, good thing. For example, if they believe that this animal is not good, so they bring you to the temple. They feel that temple is a place where they can uh, cure all those uh, bad almonds. And for me, <clears throat> Uh, I became a monk not because of I understand Buddhism, but because of the tradition. As we know that the, uh, our tradition is is not required, but it 
sort of mentality that the sons of the family have to build in for a short period in order to pay respect to the parents. So through that traditional practice, I became a monk. And from the very first beginning of my ordination life, ordain life, I was not very satisfied with it because I feel a different way of life. But gradually when I started, uh, gradually uh, years by years, then I feel I'm uh, okay and I feel happy to be in a temple. And temple give me, temple have, has uh, kind of transformed me from a very, um, very uneducated boy to uh, not very educated to uh, just a man who can understand a little bit about society and about life. So the temple is a very good place to enjoy, to learn and to live. Thank you so much, Venerable Doctor, for sharing a very great idea of how, how would you reflect um, the meaning and importance of the monastery to your own life. I'm both from the boss speaker for thank you so much. And we are running out of time, but I would like to give the last question uh, each minute to all of you. Uh, start from Venerable Tita Kuno Kaisupi. We have been talking a lot of uh, good points from monastery, how it contributes to the society. But one thing, what what is one thing uh, you would like to improve if you see that it needs to be improved uh, in the Cambodian monastery, either in Cambodia or in the United States of America, what would it be? Mute, uh, Monday. You are muted, sorry. Okay. I'm sorry, yeah. Uh, for me personally, uh, education. You know, uh, for me uh, personally, education is the core or it's the fundamental that, that can help all of us to be prosper and at the same time to grow. So, you know, uh, something that we need to change and we need to support is that we we must do more on education. I think uh, Venerable Doctor did a very great job in, in helping, you know, uh, all the institutions, you know, uh, that, that we, because, you know, in, in every developed country, education is the most important thing. It's a place where we, uh, we, are, we all, uh, can learn and can 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 make wrong to right. You know, uh, if you're only focusing on building buildings, and then uh, I think uh, we are going slow. Yeah, thank you for this. Thank you for uh, focusing on education rather than just um, the building resources, but human resources. What about what about Premani Kosal, Venerable Doctor? What is something you would like? To be improved. I agree with Venerable Kai Sufi, the education is very important and the Buddha always one wants to be learned because we are the one who teach the people, who teach the masses about life, morality, philosophy or whatever. It is a good element for a happy life. So education is a must. At the same time, I think that especially in this modern era, Buddhist monks must update themselves with the new arrival of the social advancement in terms of technologies, in terms of uh, other knowledge which they have to catch up with the society. Uh, the way that we propagate Buddhism, the way that we teach Buddhism nowadays is quite different from uh, 20 years, 60 years, 50 years back. You have to, we have to up, up, update ourselves. We cannot just carry one microphone and talk on the road. No, no, this day it is different. Day. So Buddhist monk must not complain about the advancement of technology, but must study it and use it in a very proper way. Because nowadays you don't need to go to library to read Tipitaka. You just have one smartphone and everything. Tipitaka, Atakata, Deka, and everything. The whole libraries, uh, if you know how to uh, use that, uh, that uh, digital resources, you can use you can uh, have access to millions of books. So monks must up update themselves with this uh, new advancement in the society. And at the same time, the temple should not be a place where the body have to be buried. 
We should not make our temple as a cemetery. The temple is a place to give education. It is a place to discuss about life, a place where we can help the people. And it should be a garden for all the practitioners. And building or erecting stupas uh, in the temples is not really, really a Buddhist path. So please be careful about that. I, I have an option because now Cambodian temples seems to be transformed from a very beautiful place to a cemetery nowadays. <laughs> it's very crowded and disordered. I think one temple should have only one stupa, one jetia, and we can uh, keep all the people as uh, in one place. And in that sense, I think uh, Cambodian temple can be more beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. That is very interesting in terms of the Jet Day. Uh, <laughs> uh, most of the, not, I think some temple, a lot of Jet Day and even some people traditionally, they, they, they still minding about that. Uh, they don't want the monk to get rid of the Jet Day, you know. If one, if one person die, definitely they have to build one Jet Day, very large Jet Day for their family. So imagine like 100 people to come and they die. So 100 jet day will be filled throughout the compound of monastery and the monk will no, have no place to stay at all and very complicated uh, environment actually. Thank you for raising about that point. Uh, people shouldn't mind about that thing at all. They should um, understand the environmental problem as well and the monk situation. And I couldn't agree more on education. And as Venerable Doctor said, we, we should also catch up with the advancement of uh, the modern society. Education, not just through the books, but nowadays, um, you know, uh, take it, taking a stand for right now, we are uh, doing this platform as online platform is also a way of conveying a message uh, in terms of education to people uh, according to the advancement of technology. So I believe that um, th throughout our live show discussion today, our people, especially Cambodian monks and people could have, uh, should have learned something about our discussion, even not much, at least a little bit about some useful information that both notable speakers have uh, provided very meaningfully and especially education as both of you focused, uh, importantly focus on the education as monks, we are uh, the uh, important figure to uh, be part of the educational uh, propagation, uh, especially each temple, each Khmer monastery should uh, focus on education rather than just the uh, structural resources. So human resources is so important in uh, so, so societal development in promoting culture, um, literature, and also spiritual uh, development. So thank you very much again for Bosman the Boss Speaker, uh, Bosman the Boss, Piku uh, Tita Kuno Kaisupia, live from California, and Pramani Kosal, Dr. Yon Finjit from Cambodia for contributing uh, the knowledge for all of us today. And finally, before ending the show, I would like to accumulate all merit from the gift of Dharma today. May this merit be uh, accrued to all beings in the whole universe. May all people live in peace and be free from danger and fear. May all beings be well and happy. Thank you everyone for viewing our live show and we wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Goodbye.